Hi, everybody. Welcome to our live crochet event. I'm Brenda KB Anderson. And you know, March is typically one of the snowiest months in Minnesota, which is where we are at. And it is snowing outside. But uh, like a typical Minnesotan, I have just mentally moved on to springtime. So let me introduce you to my springtime project. <laughs> Hoping spring comes soon here. Um, it is the mini meadow washcloth set. You can download your free pattern. Just look for um, the link in the comments or in the description. And this pattern does include, I saw that there was a question already. Um, this pattern does include the washcloths, these little guys here. And it also includes the basket. The basket, um, I think the instructions start on page five there. So um, it does have both, both parts to this pattern. Um, and I'm so excited to go through all the steps you need to know how to make these, this little washcloth set. So first we'll talk about materials. So you'll need your pattern and you will also need two skeins of a cotton worsted weight yarn. The, um, I think it's 120 yards for the skein um, for the basket. So there's two, oh, sorry, one skein for the basket, the full 120 yards. And then there's three other skeins, three different colors, contrasting colors, if you want it to look like mine. Um, and those you just need partial skeins of. Um, all of the yardages are in the pattern. I think it's like 70 yards per the other three contrast colors. So 120 of the one for the basket and then 70, 70, and 70 for the other ones. Um, but, you know, this is a good time if you already have some kind of uh, cotton worsted weight yarn that you can you already have it at home you can use any color any color combination this still would be cute all in one color I mean it, you know you don't have to change colors um, where I did so you could make the whole thing out of like an off-white and that would be really pretty if you wanted to put it in your bathroom um, if you don't have if you don't like the crazy colors that I picked out they're kind of fun but that's not for everyone so totally up to you um, so you'll need that. You'll need your worsted weight cotton yarn and you will need an H hook for the washcloth and you will need or you know whatever size that's what that's the size that I use so you'll need you can start out with that but then um, you'll need whatever size uh, gets you the correct gauge. So when you're when you're checking the gauge for the washcloth you just make one washcloth and then you measure it from point to point um, to, to compare it to my gauge. So you'll know that it'll fit in the basket if your gauges match. Um, and then for the basket, you're going to be needing a J hook, which might seem strange. Why would you need a bigger hook for something that you're going to be making so stiff? And it's because for the basket, you're going to hold the yarn double throughout. So that means you're going to use two strands of, I use the same color yarn, but you could use, you know, one strand of one color and one strand of another color to make it kind of modeled. Um, but you're going to be holding those two together as though they are one. So that's what makes it nice and thick, and you'll need a slightly larger hook than the one you use for the washcloth for the basket. All right, so let's start by making the washcloth. I would recommend you make at least one washcloth first before that you make the basket, just because that way you will um, you'll know for sure that your washcloths are going to fit in your basket. Because when you're making your basket, you can make some adjustments to make it bigger or smaller if it isn't, you know, when you check the gauge, if the gauge matches mine, it should fit just fine. But, you know, oftentimes our gauge is a little off or we didn't check our gauge. So I don't want there to be any nasty surprises if you make the basket first and then you make the washcloths and then it, it doesn't, they don't really fit very well um, for the, the gauge that you want for the washcloth. Because you do want something that isn't super stiff or super super floppy, you know, you'll know when you feel it, like what kind of um, stiffness, what kind of gauge you want for your washcloth. So we're going to start by taking a look in the pattern. Um, I made a chart of the washcloth itself because I am a visual learner and I know that there are some out there too that are also visual learners. Um, but if you are not, if you do not uh, care to, to work from a chart, that's okay. All of the directions are written out completely in the pattern for, for the washcloth. You can just ignore this if that's not a helpful thing for you. But I like to use this especially when I'm teaching so that I can keep my place and I don't have to be skimming through looking at all the words. <laughs> all right, so in this pattern, I do mention, you know, for these washcloths there, you can see they're all these different color combinations that I used um, and I have broken it down and made a list calling each uh, color A, B, C, and D. 
so that you'll know when to change colors if you don't want to run out of you know one yarn or the other. Um, you should have if you do have full skeins though of these, it doesn't matter. You can just make a whole bunch of them, and you don't have to worry about you know making sure that you follow my make this flower washcloth with A, B, D, and then C. You know, so you don't have to um, you don't have to follow what I wrote if you have plenty of yarn. All right, so we're gonna begin by making three chains. We start at the center of the diagram here. We're gonna make three chains, and then we're gonna make a slip stitch to close those into a little circle, and then we're gonna work into that circle. It's like very similar to how you make a granny square, if you've done that before. So to make your slip knot, you just make an E, take your slip knot, fold it over onto the, uh, the yarn that's connected to the ball, and then just put your hook underneath that and pull on these two. Or you can make a slip knot in whatever way that you normally do. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we slip stitch into that first chain like that. And then I like to use my two fingers to make sure that there's a little space there in the middle. So I'm kind of pinching the center of that. Then we are going to work three chains right here, and then we're going to work, that's going to count as the first double crochet of the round, and then we're going to work 11 more double crochets in all into that center of those chains there. So we do one, two, three, that's going to count as our first double crochet, and then to do 11 more double crochets, we yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's the first, well, the first actual double crochet. So this counts as a double crochet, and now we have two. So we're going to continue making double crochets into the center. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have three. So we're just going to continue adding all of our double crochets. So we'll have a total of 12, including that first um, beginning chain. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We need six more. One, two, three, four. And sometimes if it fills up those chains, you might have to just sort of push, slide these over so you make room for the rest of them. Okay, now I lost track. I gotta count these. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so there's our twelve. And then we are going to slip stitch into the top of those chain three, the very top, the last chain, <laughs> the last chain we made of a chain three. So we'll insert our hook in that chain, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Okay, so we slip stitch those together, and then we're just gonna cut our yarn. And just leave, you know, enough of a tail that you'll be able to weave it in, a few inches, be fine. All right, so we just pull it through and fasten off. There's the first round. Second round, we're going to start, again, we start with a slip, a slip knot on our hook. And then we are going to, we're, we're working this black round here, and it starts with number two. So we're going to um, slip stitch in between the last double crochet and then that beginning chain to join this to our work. So that's right here. Actually, it really doesn't matter where you choose to slip stitch between, you can choose any of those posts. It's, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. So you just pull that and pull through here to join it. And then we're gonna do one chain. And now working in that same space where we did our, our little joining stitch, we're gonna do a, what I labeled as the beginning puff stitch, which is um, abbreviated BPS in the pattern. So you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook in that same space, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then we're gonna do that a second time yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, and now you should have five loops. 
yarn over and then pull through all of the loops. So that's going to make the beginning puff stitch, which has one less yarn over insert, yarn over pull up. That, that little system there, it has one less of those than all the rest of the puff stitches will around this round. And the reason is because this takes up a little space, that little beginning chain and the joining and all that, and it just looked a little bit more even. So I am going to hold that beginning yarn tail and the ending yarn tail here together along the top of my work so that I can work over them. You don't need to do this. You can completely skip that, but um, if, if that seems awkward to you, don't worry about it. You can weave them in later. This just gives you a little, a little foot up on the, um, the weaving in for later. All right, so now we're going to do a puff stitch in each of these spaces between stitches. So every time it's a space between a post, we're going to do a puff stitch in there. And then including this one, we will have a total of 12 puff stitches around. And then in between each puff stitch, we're going to do a one chain. So you can see that here. So there's a puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch, chain one. That's what we're going to do all the way around. So we do our chain one. And I'm working around those two strands. I'm going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. That's once. Oops, my, got to make sure those aren't showing from the front. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up. Now we did that three times. Then we yarn over, pull through everything. Then we're going to do a chain one. And you'll notice these puff stitches, I'm making them a little bit longer than I normally would make a stitch on purpose because pulling through all those loops, it can, your hook can kind of get stuck in there. So you just elongate them just a little more than you normally would. If you're having trouble getting your hook through when you're pulling it through the puff stitch, it's because you didn't pull up enough. And I'll show you that again here. So we'll yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up. And this is the part where I'm talking about making it a little longer, that pulling up. And we'll do that two more times. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through all of those loops. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops that you're going through to make that puff stitch. Okay, and we're going to continue that all the way around. So chain one in between, then we're going to do puff stitch. One, two, three. So this would be a good time for me to mention that, of course, this is a live event. So if you have questions or if you need me to clarify something, um, I'd be happy to do that. Just uh, write it out in the chat box so that I can see what your questions are. Or if you have comments, if you want to tell me like what you're working on or if you want to tell me, give me ideas for future live events, I would love that. Um, that would be awesome, too. And there was a question that somebody had about whether you can wash these like normal and you can just throw them in the washing machine and then after that throw them in the dryer. And I find that with these, they do shrink a little bit when you put them in the dryer, um, but they don't tend to curl up too much it, or really much at all. It was kind of surprising. And you can even machine wash the basket if you want to, but I would let that air dry because I think if you, that's kind of, it needs to have the right shape to it, so you might need to kind of shape it when you pull it back out of the wash. Um, but yeah, you won't need to do anything too special to it, <laughs> especially these washcloths. I want them to be low maintenance. They're supposed to be helpful, not just pretty, right? We don't want to have to iron all of our washcloths. That would be super annoying. Okay. All right, we have a few more puff stitches to do. And these washcloths can be used for anything. I mean, they can be used in the kitchen, they can be used in the bathroom. Um, I just like to have some smaller washcloths because sometimes you don't need all of that extra fabric flopping around. And this way, you know, when, when you get one dirty, you can toss it in the wash and then you've got lots more. You don't need to, um, you, need, you don't need to worry about that. Oh, I think I had too many loops on that puff. It looks a little too big. We'll try that again. And then at some point, you can stop hanging on to those tails that you're working over and just let them lie back there. We'll weave them in later. All right, we've got one more to do after this one. 
and then we'll count them to make sure. All right, we end with a chain one, and then we just slip stitch into the top of this puff stitch. You can skip that chain if you want. I mean, it actually really wouldn't really matter if you slip stitch into the chain or into your puff, um, wherever you like to fasten it off. And then we're just gonna cut our yarn again. Oh, wait, let's count before we cut our yarn. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so we have 12 there. That's what we should have. Just cut your yarn and pull it through to fasten it off. And then we're gonna pick the third color. And this round, we're gonna be working round number three. That's in blue here. So we're gonna, again, begin with a slip knot on our hook. And then you can choose any spot between these secretly. And the pattern I say to go specifically between the last puff and then the first puff, but anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just insert your hook between the puffs, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're gonna yarn over, pull through two. And that is gonna count as the first single crochet of the round, and which is right here, this little plus sign. Then we're gonna do a chain above the puff and then two single crochets in each chain space between puffs all the way around. So chain above your puff, two single crochets into the chain one space. So we do a chain because there's a puff there and then we'll do two single crochets here. Oh, for the single crochet, I'm gonna actually um, crochet over these yarn tails as well. You don't have to though, again, that's up to you. Um, Actually, maybe not the blue one, just the pink one. I will insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. That's your single crochet. So we'll do two single crochets and that's chain one space, chain one, two single crochets in the next chain space. That loop got a little long, let's make that a little smaller. And we, I chained one and now I'm doing two more single crochets in that chain space and we're just gonna work this all the way around our circle. This basically just lays the groundwork for the little kind of scalloped flower petal looking edge that we're gonna do next on the next round, which is with the same color. So you don't even really see this part that we're doing. This is just sort of to, yeah, give us a, give us a space to add all of those stitches into later. That's what we're doing. Let's see, oh, Lynn L.B. Bryan is asking if I'm using 100% cotton. Yes, I am. Um, this was just purchased at a big box store. It is 100% cotton. I would recommend using 100% cotton or something close to 100% cotton because you want it to be nice and absorbent. Let's see, and oh, and you're asking, the basket pattern is included. It, the instructions for the basket pattern, I think they're on page five. They're right at the end. They're right after the washcloth flower part of the pattern, but they are actually, in, they are in there. They're included in the, in the set pattern. All right, so we've made it all the way around, except for where we had started. There was that one stitch, so we're gonna add another single crochet, so that way there are two single crochets in each chain one space. We don't need a join or anything at the end. We're just going to continue working right here on round number four. And we're going to put, let's see, seven, one, two, three, four, four, yeah, I had to count to make sure, seven double crochets into that chain one space. And then we do a single crochet into the next chain one space, okay? So here we are working round four of the washcloth pattern. We're just going to start by doing a yarn over inserting our hook into that chain one space and all these chain one spaces that are in this round they are right above the puff stitches so that'll help you locate them but you insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two 
Yarn over, insert. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All right, we've done two double crochets so far, and we're going to do five more. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Okay. And this is kind of a tight squeeze here to put it all into that chain one, but it helps it to not have a gap. So you may have to kind of use your fingers to move that section over so you have enough room for all of them. One, two, three, four, five. We need two more. Six. Seven. There's our seventh double crochet. And then we are going to do a single crochet in that next chain one space above the puff stitch. So there's a single crochet there. So basically you make this little rounded scallop and where you land, that's where you make the single crochet. So after you make the single crochet, you skip to the next chain one space and you make seven double crochets. Ooh, that loop got a little big, let's tighten that up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then a single crochet in the next chain one space. And we just repeat all the way around. Do we get our flower? I'll do one more and then I'll show you the finished one so you can see where we're going from here. Five, six, whoops, and seven. Actually, maybe we'll just finish this so then I can show you how to join at the very end. We'll do that. Okay, so there was our single crochet, doing another set of seven double crochets here. Three, four, five, six, seven. So um, if you haven't worked with this kind of dishcloth cotton before, um, you might notice that it is a little bit stickier than like an acrylic or a wool. Um, so you just need to be a little bit more patient with yourself as you're working around and you'll get the hang of it. It might just be a little bit awkward at first because it's a little bit sticky sliding against the hook. And I know that cotton tends to be, you know, it's very inelastic, so it tends to hurt people's hands a little bit if they crochet with it too much, especially at a tighter gauge, which is what you're going to be doing when we make that basket. So make sure that you take, you know, if you're starting to notice that your hands are starting to cramp or anything like that, you know, take a break or work on a different project that is, has a softer yarn or a more elastic yarn, I should say. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oops. Kind of accidentally grabbed that loop there. All right. And then to end this, you're going to put a single crochet. <laughs> you're going to put a single crochet in that last chain one space, like that. And then you will slip stitch into the top of your very first double crochet that you did around and fasten off. So slip stitch, and then just clip your yarn and pull through like that. And then you can just measure that and see if it's pretty close to my gauge. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a lot bigger, you may want to go down a hook size. If it's a lot smaller, you can go up a hook size so that you get something similar to mine. Unless you are just in love with the, the way that it feels and you want it exactly as, as it is, then just leave it and make your washcloth that way. And then um, I'll teach you when we work on the basket how to make the basket a little bigger or a little bit smaller. So you'll have that info too. 
So then you're just going to weave in your ends back here um, and weave them in in a couple of directions. And if you can, split the some of the strands so that they stay in. Because remember, this is going to be something that's going to be washed over and over and over um, again. So you don't want those ends coming out. So you can, you can go back and forth in a couple of directions and always make sure when you're trying to weave something in that's going to have to stay and going to be washed a lot. If you split your yarn, like if you actually poke your needle into your, you know, the strand of yarn or a couple of the strands of your yarn, it's a little grippier that way and it's a tighter space instead of going between strands of yarn. Um, and that way it'll keep it, you know, it'll hold it a little bit tighter and won't let it slip out. So as I'm going through here, I can feel that foundation chain that we made. It's like a little bit harder when you poke your needle in. So you can try to make your needle go through some of the strands of that foundation chain as well, and that will help hold it a little bit better. So you're gonna wanna sew, you know, sew, sew in all your ends, weave them in back and forth in a couple of directions, then you can clip them off. Um, yeah, and then you have your washcloth. So next up, I'm going to teach you how to make the basket, which if you were, um, if you joined us at the beginning, you heard me talking about how we are using two strands of yarn held together as one. And that makes the basket nice and thick and stiffer, more importantly. So it stay, let me just show you actually, this is the, the basket that we're making. Look at all those beautiful wash class, right? So fun. Um, but look at, see, I can just stand it up on end. You can see, you know, it's not, you know, it's not completely rigid like a straw basket, but it will keep its shape and it's not going to flop over. I mean, I can crush it if I want to. Well, it still kind of springs back up. Um, and that is because we're using two strands and we're crocheting fairly tightly. And also, uh, something that I learned was adding these little bits of, this is like a, called surface crochet, it's just little slip stitches, that actually makes it much stiffer. So it helps it, keeps it, keep its shape. So not only is it decorative, but it also is serving a purpose. So to begin the basket, um, we're going to be working with, in, uh, with the magic loop or sometimes called, uh, um, oh, what are the other names for it? Magic loop, adjustable loop, I know there's like five different names for this, um, but it's when you make like this little, it's, it almost looks like you're making a slip knot. Well, the way that I do it, this is the way I prefer to make it. You make it almost like you're making a slip knot. You flip that over and then you put your crochet hook underneath the middle. And then you can just pull through to anchor it. Actually, let me make sure. Now I am questioning whether I started this with a chain three or, or, or a magic loop. It actually doesn't matter which way you go. I just want to make sure I show you the way that I say to do it. Um, let's see. Page five. Yep, adjustable loop. Okay, I did do this. You, if you decide you don't want to make the adjustable loop, that's fine. You can definitely start it out exactly the same way that we started out the washcloth with the chain three and then a slip stitch and then work the next... Um, six single crochet into that chain three space. All right, so, oops, I just realized I'm using the wrong hook. So you have to switch to the bigger hook when you're using your yarn doubled for the basket. Doesn't matter for making that loop, that's fine. All right, so now we're gonna do six single crochets into that loop. So we just insert our, look, or our hook into the loop, pull up a, uh, a strand, well, the held double, yarn over, and then pull through two, and that is our first single crochet. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the second one. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, three, four, five, and six. And at this point, if you use an adjustable loop, you're going to need to pull on that and tighten it up. All right. And then um, you're going to use, let's see, I didn't bring my stitch markers over here, but I'm going to steal one from this. 
Um, you can use a stitch marker to keep track of the first stitch of your of the round so that you know where you're at. In this basket, I have um, in the directions I say to work around and around and unjoined unjoined rounds, which basically means you're just working around and around and you're never doing that slip stitch to join. You're just continuing around and around and around and around, making single crochets and doing increases, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then later in the basket, for working the sides of the basket, we do join. And you can see that here, there are these little ridges here. Those are created by um, the slip, sti slip stitch join <laughs> that happens at the end of the rounds. And the reason that I have you do that for this part and not for down here is because that way when we put this edging on, it can continue straight across at this point. If you did it in a spiral, it wouldn't, it would disconnect, like you would have your color going around here and then it would end up up here and it would look like it doesn't meet up in that one spot. So that kind of annoyed me. So I was like, all right, we're going to just have to join these rounds because even though I don't normally join my rounds for things when I can get away with it because I think it looks better without that join. That's just personal preference though. All right, so we, here we have our six single crochets into that adjustable loop. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to do two single crochets into each stitch around. So one, two, and this should be, you know, it's, it's tighter than I normally crochet because we're making this stiff basket. It shouldn't be so hard that you cannot get your hook into it though. If that's happening, then maybe try going up a hook size. Um, but test it out for a little bit. You'll get used to it. I know it's a little bit awkward at first having it be a little bit stiff like this, but do a couple of rounds before you give up <laughs> and then switch to a different hook, okay? I don't mean give up completely because I know you're not gonna do that because you want this basket. All right, so we've got two single crochets in the first stitch and here's our second two single crochets in the second stitch. So we have a total of four so far. We're gonna continue around making two single crochets in each stitch around. We had six and now we're going to have 12 at the end of this round. Oops, I skipped that one. No, I didn't. Just kidding. All right, so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that should be 12. And this is just the basic formula for how to make a flat circle as you're um, working in single crochet in the round. So the next round, we are going to be doing um, one stitch with single crochet. Actually, I'm going to look at the directions and tell, and to make sure I'm telling you exactly what it says. Okay, two single crochets into the next stitch and then one single crochet into the following stitch. So every round when you're making a flat circle out of single crochet in the round, every round you're actually increasing by six stitches. So this round we're going to, so half of the stitches we're increasing in and the other half we're not. So we're gonna do two single crochets in that first stitch, put our stitch marker back in and then one single crochet in the next stitch. So that's not an increase. The increase is just all that means, it's just a fancy word for saying you're putting two single crochet stitches into one stitch, like I just did there. And the next one is just a single crochet, two in this one. Oops. Every once in a while, <laughs> that'll happen, um, where you're pulling through and you only grab one of the two strands. You just gotta back it up. But that happens sometimes, you know, when you're working with multiple strands at one time. It's just the way it is. But it'll be worth it because you'll have a nice, stiff, structured basket when you're done. All right, two in this one and one in the next one. And you'll have a total of 18 stitches. So each, each of the next, you know, couple of rounds, it will tell you in the pattern um, how many increases to be making. It'll say two single crochets into this stitch and then whatever number of single crochets after that. And then you repeat that over and over again um, until you get around it. So you're just gonna keep going around and around and around. You don't need a slip stitch to join. You just keep going until you have finished the bottom of the basket. And that will look like this. 
nice and flat, pretty stiff. And then we are going to do a stitch called the back post single crochet. So many people might be familiar with post stitches where you work around the post. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this stitch. Um, this is a little bit less common because it's a single crochet post stitch. And normally when we're doing post stitches, it's usually like a double crochet post stitch or um, a, a treble crochet or something taller. But this is a single crochet post stitch and we only have to do this for one round of the basket. I'm just going to check it over here and see if there's anything else that I missed. Oh, somebody's interested in a sunflower granny square as a lesson. Okay. Thank you, Laura, for that idea. And Karen's wondering if there's a recording of this tutorial. Yes, it will always be available. You can watch it, you know, anytime. All right, so we have finished the last round of the bottom of the basket, and now we're going to be working single crochets, a, a back post single crochet all the way around. So at the very last, on the very last round, we are going to do a join. Let's see. Let me make sure telling you exactly what I wrote here. <laughs> All right, so round seven, we've just finished round seven. At the very end of round seven, we are going to do a slip stitch to join. And the reason that we're doing this is because from here on out, we're going to be working in joined rounds and I just wanted to sort of smooth out that little bump. So that just means you insert your hook yarn over, pull it up, and pull through. That's our join. And then we are going to start round one, which is the sides of the basket. We are going to chain one. That does not count as a stitch. And you know, this counting as a stitch, does count, not counting as a stitch, what does all that stuff mean? Counting it as a stitch basically means when there's a stitch count at the end of, you know, the sentence, th as I'm saying here, this is not counted as a stitch. So, you know, that you wouldn't count this when you're you know, counting up all your stitches all the way around. Um, the other thing that it means is that you are not going to work into the stitch that we make. That chain, we don't work into it. So it's like you make it and then you completely ignore it. You don't count it, you don't work into it. It's like it didn't even exist anymore, right? That's, that's an uncounted stitch. All right, so we are going to work around the post of our stitches. This is the post right here of your single crochet. There's the top, that's where we normally work under, you know, underneath these little Vs. So the post is the part that you can see from, you know, the right side of your work. And to do a back post, that means we start in the back and we insert our hook before we get to the stitch, before the post of the stitch. And then we insert it to go back right after. So we're coming up here, right there, and then we're going down right on the other side of that post. I'll show you what that looks like. So we insert our hook. So keep your yarn behind your hook at this point. Insert your hook from the back to the front and then from the front to the back right after that post. Then you're going to yarn over and pull it across all the way and then you're going to complete your single crochet by yarning over and pulling through two loops. All right, we're gonna do that all the way around so you'll get to see it again. So you push your hook in from the back side to the front, and then from the front to the back on the other side of that post, whoops. Yarn over, pull through all the way, then you should have two loops on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through both. Okay, I'll show you that a little faster. From the back to the front and the front to the back. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. From the back to the front and then the front to the back. Yarn over, pull through everything, and then, except for that loop on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through two. So basically you're making a regular single crochet stitch. It's just that you're pulling up your loop in a weird spot. You're pulling it, you're pulling it up around that post. Now, if you are working on this and maybe you're a beginner crocheter and you're like, that stitch is too crazy for me, I cannot do that right now, that is okay. What I would recommend if you don't, if you 
try this and it's not working out for you, um, then I would say just start this the first, instead of doing back posts, single crochets all the way around, just work a regular single crochet into that back loop only. And that'll get almost the same effect. What we're trying to do, um, what we're doing in this, <laughs> the reason that I, I chose to do this slightly awkward stitch here at this point, um, is because I really wanted the bottom of the basket to have a corner on it. So what we're doing is we're like, instead of crocheting, you know, this is, was going flat, now we have bended, we have a bend in our project. You can kind of see if you look down at the top of it, it was flat here and now our, our project is curving this way. And it would do that, you know, gradually if you just started single crocheting around and around and around. You can make a basket that way. But I just really wanted to have that, like, sharp corner so that it stayed, you know, sat on the, the counter nicely. And you didn't have to, you know, futz with it. It would just sit there. But, you know, it is a little bit awkward to do. But it's good practice, and it's a cool technique, and it's um, kind of fun to learn a new thing. It's very similar to a single crochet. You're just putting your hook in a different spot. So I'll do a few more, and then I'll show you what this is looking like. And see how it's making that nice turn. It's making it a corner there. And when I first started learning the back post single crochet, I got a little confused about where I was supposed to hold my yarn, this yarn, <laughs> whether it was supposed to be here or whether it was supposed to be here. I just, I didn't know. Um, but it is supposed to be, like, keep your hook when you're going into the back post, keep your hook in front of this yarn, but behind your work like this, like that. And then after you've worked your, that kind of L shaped, you know, turn in it, on your next round, um, at, at the end of the round, you're going to do a slip stitch join just how we did before we started this round. You just do a slip stitch in the next stitch, and then you chain one, and then you work a round of single crochet. So you're going to just complete, you know, you're going to complete most of the basket pattern that way by working around and around and around. You can see here's the little um, turn that we made, and then Here's all of our little slip stitch joins. And this is just rounds of single crochet worked um, around. And then you do a slip stitch join, chain one, and continue. So this is what your basket should look like after you have worked through, let's see, round seven. Yeah, OK, so it'll be really round eight. You're working seven rounds of single crochet after you do that first round of the um, back post single crochets. And this is what your basket will look like. And so because we didn't do any increases or anything, it just made a, you know, straight sides that came straight up and made a nice cylinder shape. So then we are going to do a round of slip stitches. So that was our last here. Let me back up. I'll just take a little bit of this out. So you'll, you're going to be finishing each round of the single crochet. So here's our last single crochet. And then we join into that first single crochet we made of the round just like that with a slip stitch. And then if we were going to do another round, we would chain one and continue. And when you chain one and continue in this pattern, you chain one, it doesn't count as a stitch. So that means you're going to be working into that same one to do your first single crochet of the round. And you can use a stitch marker to mark that if that's helpful to you. Um, usually when I'm doing joined rounds, I don't need to mark it because there's sort of a jog in it. But it might be helpful if you are just beginning um, to have that extra marker there to, to make sure that you're paying attention. <laughs> all right, so you've already slip stitched into this to do your join, and then we're just going to slip stitch all the way around the whole basket in the same color. You don't need to change colors at this point anyway. So we're just inserting, 
pulling it up and pulling it through. That's just a uh, simple slip stitch. And, you know, sometimes slip stitches tend to be really tight. They can be. It just depends on, you know, what, what yarn you're using in the hook. Just if it's getting, if it's constricting the edge of your basket, it should just be adding a nice thickness to it, not stretching it out, not shrinking it in. Um, if it is shrinking it in, then I would recommend going up a hook size and checking to see if that's gonna work better for you. And then we'll just do a couple of the little details of the slip stitches around of the stripes after this. Oops. All right, we're almost to the end. And then I'll show you a little trick for using the yarn held double, but you'll have less ends to weave in, and that's kind of fun. Almost there. All right. There's our last stitch that didn't have a slip stitch in it. So we'll just cut our yarn and yarn over, pull through fasten it off. Okay, and then you can weave that in or you can save it till later to weave in. Weave in all your ends at the same time. And then we're going to do these stripes. So it'll tell you in the pattern which rows get which color, but you can stripe it however you like. You can ignore what I say about what colors go where. You can stripe it in any way you want. You could even put stripes down the whole thing if you want. That would be cool. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do this top round, but all of them are made the same way. And you are just slip stitching in that space between your single crochet stitches. So if you see, here's a row of single crochet stitches, and then here's a row of single crochet stitches, you can kind of see that there's little holes between, that crack between. That's where you're going to be making your slip stitches. And this is just called surface crochet, because you're basically just crocheting on the surface. So. Um, if you, let's see, what would be enough? If you already have your yarn made into two different balls, that makes this really easy. But I'm just going to pull off enough that I think would make it all the way around the basket. Um, I guess we'll find out. We'll be learning together because I can't remember exactly the yardage that you need. But we'll find out. So let's see. This will be one, two... Uh, about three. We'll say three yards. We'll see if that works. And then if this doesn't work, then I'll tell you, I'll make a better estimated guess for what you can do. Um, you can also just take two strands of yarn from two different balls and um, just begin slip stitching by pulling up a loop and then slip stitching around. But I like to just insert my hook here. You can go on either side of your join. It doesn't matter. Just somewhere around your join would put all of the ends in the same uh, space or in the same column. And then I just put the end of my yarn, the folded end, on my hook and pull it up right there, just like that. And now we're going to be using it doubled from this point on. So we're going to insert, whoops, that's the wrong space. We got to go below, below that, below that line of um, single crochet. Put that back on. All right, so we pulled up a loop and then we're just going to insert our hook. We're just going in this groove between this round of single crochet and this round of single crochet. You're going to yarn over with both held together and pull it up and pull it through the loop on your hook. Insert into the next space, yarn over, pull up, pull through the loop on your hook. Now you can see these are all going to be doubled, but this is a little thinner, but that's okay because when we come around to the end, we're going to have to do a little bit of fancy weaving in to make it look nice, and it's fine that there's a little bit less yarn there because we can add more yarn on top of it. And that way you don't have to weave in your beginning yarn tails. I'm all about not weaving in ends <laughs> when you can get away with it. Because I don't think I know anybody who like really is super into weaving in their ends. I mean, it's just a thing you have to do, right? If you are super into weaving in your ends, then you can let me know. 
<laughs> and then I'll be oppressed. All right. So we're just making slip stitches all the way around in between, you know, in the, along that little groove. And again, like I was saying before, make sure your slip stitches are not constricting your basket. You don't want to have the, the top of your basket be smaller than the bottom of your basket because it'll be hard to get your washcloths in there. Oops. Ooh, I just pulled a little bit on that yarn. Oh, looks like I'm missing some comments here. Okay, on the very first round, do you slip stitch into the beginning slip stitch or the first chain? I'm assuming the first slip stitch does not count as the first stitch. Okay, so Donna, correct me if, correct me if I have this wrong, but I think you're talking about when we're joining at the ends of our rounds for the sides of the basket. I'm guessing that's what you mean. Um, you will be slip stitching, that is a very good question. You are slip stitching into the first stitch of the round, which count, which is actually counted. So that is a single crochet. That is the first single crochet that you make in the round. Because your chain one at the beginning, your beginning chain one, doesn't count as a stitch, so we don't ever work into it. Okay, and Frenzy is asking, so the pretty right side of the basket will be on the outside set on the flat surface then? Yes. So this is the right side of your work, so that will be setting down. But the inside, that's going to have washcloths in it anyway. Um, if you really wanted it to look the opposite way, you could turn your work around at the time when you're doing your sides, but I... Um, I, I didn't feel like I needed to, to flip it to flip it around like that because I thought that would be too confusing to too many people. Um, but yes, so this is the right side of your work and it is down on the table. And then, you know, your right, the right side of your work continues and then the right side of the work is on the outside of the sides of your basket. That makes sense. Okay, and Bobby is asking why, why to do it that way instead of using, doing the back loop only. And I'm wondering, um, Bobby, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm wondering if you're talking about why was I doing those back post single crochets instead of through the back loop? Um, if that's what you're asking, it, it gives it a much sharper ridge here and it, it's much stiffer. It, it makes it much stiffer because you're making those post stitches. It has like extra yarn kind of wound around. Um, it's a thicker stitch. And so it makes that turn a lot more I don't know, stable, I guess. If you're just going through the back loop, you know, if you go through here and you're like, yeah, I don't want to do any of that back post nonsense. I'm just going to go through the back loop. That's fine because you'll still get that square shape, but it's not going to be quite as structured here at the corner. You know, when you set it on the table, it might be, it, it just won't be quite as, as structured at that point, but it's fine. It'll still stand up and it'll still be fine. <laughs> it's just a little detail. Um, but, you know, try it and see what you think of it. All right, so when you make it all the way around, slip stitch into this last one here, which is where you had originally inserted your hook, and then you can cut your yarn, and then you can choose, there's lots of different ways you can finish this off. You can just pull this out, Actually, I'll show, I think that's the simplest way. I'll do it the simplest way. Um, you can just pull this straight out and then you can use your yarn needle to tuck it back down. Oops, getting a little split there. does not want to go through my needle. All right. You can do it. There we go. All right. So I would use my yarn needle to push this back down like along where we already did that, where we did that first part where we pulled up our loop. So that's going to give it a second loop and it'll look just like all the other ones. 
just like that. And then the same thing with this. All right. And if you have a bigger yarn needle, that would be helpful. So you won't be having such a hard time getting your um, yarn in like I am. Okay, so just like that. See, and then it looks nice and even and they look like they're all the same. You can hardly even tell that there was a beginning and an end right there. And then you can just use your yarn needle and weave it back and forth. I, I like to, I mean, you can try to hide it in, the, in a contrasting color, but I just found that it was just as easy for me to just kind of weave it in through the matching color and then it doesn't show quite so much. And then just like I said before, if you can split your yarn a little bit, that helps. Um, and weave it back and forth in a couple of directions. You know, if you know you're gonna be gonna be washing this in the washing machine, just be, you know, really diligent about getting those ends weave, woven in um, in a couple of directions. So, and then you would weave in this one too, and then you would do the next two rounds of your contrast colors. One would be right here, and then one would be right here. Basically, you're just skipping the, the bump of the single crochet and making another one in the groove, and then making another one in that groove. And that will create all of your little stripes. And so you might be wondering why, why does she have to keep pushing this down? Well, this is just bunching up just a little bit, but if you steam it the first time, I think that's all you'll need to do is just put, um, put this on your ironing board and put your iron on the hottest steam setting and do not actually touch your work, but just steam it above and kind of press this into shape. Um, or you can steam it from the inside maybe if you can get it close enough, I don't know. Um, you can also wet block it too if you want, but I find for cotton that steam does a really nice job of, of shaping it. So then you just weave in all your ends and then you have your basket um, with all of these little pieces. And let me see, if you guys have any more questions, get them in now and I'm just gonna talk about one more little quick thing before we go. Let's see, just wanted to see if I missed anything. Um, okay. Let's see, Frenzy says, I just push my wash clothes on the pegs of the dishwasher rack on the top and make sure something is sort of setting on the edges of them and they're in there and throw them out, lay them all flat to let it dry. Okay, yeah, so, so just letting things air dry. Okay. Um, all right. So the one thing I wanted to mention was that um, in this pattern you're making, I think it's 12, I can't remember, but the number that I made that are in the photo that I have here, um, except for that extra one I made, they f more than fill up the basket. If you put them in here, they kind of um, are overflowing a little bit, which is how I wanted it to be because I found, the first time I made a little basket, um, it wasn't this pr particular project, and I made all the washcloths to fit in there, and then I realized later, like, why didn't I make more washcloths than actually fit in the basket? Because that would actually make more sense for, for my personal needs, because I always have washcloths that are running through the, the laundry, like they're always in the, in the laundry, so, uh, you know, that way you don't have a basket that only has like a few of these in there and then all the rest of them are in the, in the laundry. And so since I had enough yarn and you actually, th these are my leftovers from this particular sample. So you can actually make quite a bit more of this, um, quite, quite a bit more washcloths out of the full skeins if you bought the um, four full skeins to begin with. Um, and then you'll have plenty of extra so you can always have a mostly full basket in case you have a big mess that you need to clean up, <laughs> which happens at our house. So, all right, I'm just gonna check one last time. Oh, okay, we have a question about if the washcloths can be made larger by making more rounds before the scallops. Um, you could, but then you would have to do some stitches between your scallops, or you would have to do maybe double the scallops. So that would require some math and some planning. Um, you could also just try going up, I mean, if you just want them to be larger, you can try going up a hook size or two and see if you like how they feel in your hand. I mean, these are fairly, I don't want to say they're stiff, but maybe you can kind of tell 
They're, they do have a little bit of body to them. I wanted to, them to be in between like a little scrubby and an actual washcloth. So they're maybe a little bit stiffer than a regular washcloth would be because they're small. But if you wanted a bigger washcloth, maybe you could just go up, uh, maybe I would try two hook sizes or something and see if you like how it looks and that would make it a little bit bigger. Um, otherwise, maybe you could try doing some sort of border around it, but you would have to be increasing, you know, if you're doing single crochet borders around, you'd have to be increasing it six stitches at least every round to make it lie flat. So that would take some experimentation, I think. I don't think there's a, like a super short answer to that. Um, let's see. All right. I, th I think I've answered everybody's questions. And it's been super fun to teach this live. Um, and I hope that you guys come back for, for future lives. I really enjoy doing this. And thank you so much for joining me.